على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وأوفوا الكيل إذا كلتم وزنوا بالقسطاس وال وزنوا بالقسطاس المستقيم ذلك خير وأحسن تأويلا ولا تقف ما ليس لك به علم إن السمع والبصر والفؤاد كل أولئك كان عنه مسؤولا ولا تمشي في الأرض مرحا إنك لا تخرق الأرض ولا تبلغ الجبال طولا كل ذلك كان سيئه عند ربك مكروها ذلك مما أوحى إليك ربك من الحكمة ولا تجعل مع الله إلها آخر فتلقى في جهنم ملوما مدحورا صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأوفوا الكيل إذا كلتم Fulfill the measure when you measure. Wazinu bil qistas al mustaqim and weigh with a straight balance. So awful kail, kail refers to a measure of the liquid. When you are measuring the liquid, wazinu bil qistas and weigh with a straight balance. So basically, do not reduce when you are giving neither some liquid commodity nor some. Thing that is sold by weight. Thalika khair. This is goodness. This is way better. This is fair. So in itself, this act is just and of a good nature. Even if you look apart from Sharia, this is what justice dictates. This is what good character dictates. That whenever you are giving somebody something, give them their full. Wa ahsan utawila, and it is better at the end. So therefore, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling us that not only is it good in itself, but also in the matter of outcome, it is good for your own self. That if somebody is selling something and they are they become famous for stealing by not weighing fully or not measuring fully, then their goodwill, their trust will be gone and they will uh, lose out. Therefore, this is also better for you in terms of your worldly outcome that you give when you are giving, give give it fully. And in this ayah also, Hazrat Mufassirin have written that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has placed the burden of fulfilling the measure on the one who's selling. So the one who's selling, it is their responsibility that when they are selling something, if there are defects in it, tell the buyer about it, and don't try to deceive the buyer by hiding the uh, facts about what you're selling or by reducing in measure or weight. ولا تقف ما ليس لك به علم and do not follow a thing about which you have no knowledge. So this refers to our deen and our dunya as well. That do not go after things or do not establish things in your mind that you do not have full knowledge about. So therefore, in deen as well and in dunya as well, don't listen to everything and start believing in it. Don't Uh, see everything and start believing in it, but have concrete knowledge about something, and then start to make it your belief. So, therefore, in Deen, our Quran and the Ahadith that are authentically reported from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they are the ones who constitute our firm belief and our aqidah. And then, Hasan and Sahih Ahadith, which are, which about which. There is overwhelming evidence, and there is overwhelming hope that they are the righteous knowledge of Deen. They tell us the ways to do things and the knowledge of the peripheral acts of Deen. So this is what there is concrete evidence about. Apart from that, do not go after everything that you hear. Do not go after everything that somebody tells you that this is your Deen and start following it. Follow the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the righteous way of the Sahaba. And in worldly matters as well, do not start thinking anything about anyone because just because you heard it somewhere. Similarly, do not start doing anything just because you heard it that certain thing is beneficial for you unless you have achieved concrete knowledge about it. So the things that we Uh, relating to our lives, these things that we keep on seeing every day on social media through platforms 
whatsapp and facebook and youtube and this and that do not we should not start uh, paying heed to them we should not start to let them establish their place in our hearts and minds in sam'a wal basara wal fu'ada kullu ulaika kana anhum mas'ula for sure without doubt the ear the eye and the heart all of them each of them each of these will be interrogated about so whatever we do with our ear whatever we do with our eyes and whatever we do with our heart the meaning here is that <coughs> the chief source of learning knowledge is through the ear we learn the most things by listening then the next station is of the eye most things we learn by seeing but not less than less than what we hear but more than everything else and then they make their place in our heart and in our mind allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that allah is going to ask about each of these so what you firmly believe about what kind of opinion do you hold about somebody do you have arrogance in your heart do you have patience in your heart do you have hatred for someone do you have excessive anger do you have love for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not do you have hatred for kufr and disbelief and this the sinning and disobedience to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do you have love for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or not do you have hatred for the enemies of the and the ways of the enemies of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or not everything that's in the heart allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to question us about it not those things that come and pass but those things that are established in our heart consciously kullu ulaika kana anhu mas'ula allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask about it on the day of judgment wala tamshi fil ardi maraha these are the last two of the the last of the commandments given here do not walk on the earth in an arrogant in a style of arrogance or a haughty style innaka lan takhriqa al ard you can neither tear the earth apart walan tablugh al jibal and not, neither can you match the mountains tula in their height so somebody who walks erect in a manner that exudes arrogance in a manner that shows off that i am a strong person look at me how 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 strong i am or how powerful i am somebody who walks in that style and there is things that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has mentioned that by definition are a style of arrogance for example covering your ankles with the lower garment the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that this is a style of arrogance the people of arab that time they used to trail their garment behind them showing off their walk so this is something that is by definition a part of arrogance so do not walk on the earth by in an arrogant style in a haughty style you can never tear the earth apart with your walking nor can you reach the mountains the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala other creations of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are much stronger than you so don't try to show off and don't try to walk and this takabbur or kibr this is something really despised really he- hated by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us more or less meaning of the hadith that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that kibr or arrogance or being high is the rida of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is the mental the 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 the, sh- the shawl of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whoever tries to snatch it from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that i will definitely put them in the hell fire similarly the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us that those people who are arrogant in this world allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reduce them in their stature to the size of ants on the day of judgment and they will be burnt in the brightest and the most severe of fire may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us similarly the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that's a person who dies in such a state that even if they have a particle of arrogance in their heart they will not enter into jannah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us even if somebody has arrogance in their heart they should consciously try to suppress that arrogance and try to find ways to treat it one of the most perfect ways of treating arrogance is to sit in the company of those people who have humiliated themselves before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who have made themselves humble before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the diseases the sicknesses of the heart they don't go away by taking physical medicine or by doing physical things unless the 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 way of our heart and our personalities is that they steal from the personalities that we interact with that the personalities that we socialize with the personalities that we spend time with so spend time with people who are humble and you will become humble yourself
the Prophet ﷺ has told us there is a narration by Sayyidina Umar Khattab radiallahu an. The Prophet ﷺ has said that whoever makes themselves humble, of course, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates them. And it happens that they are small in their own eyes, but they are great in the eyes of the people. They are respectable in the eyes of people. And if somebody tries to elevate themselves by arrogance, they think that they are great. They think that they are somebody big. But in the eyes of people, they are reduced to worse than dogs and pigs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us dua as well. That we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ja'alni fi aini saghira. Ya Allah, make me someone who is small in their own eyes. Who is humble and less in their own eyes. Wa ja'alni fi aini nasi kabira. And make me someone who is great and respectable in the eyes of other people. So respect in the eyes of other people is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses his favorite people with. But to consider your own self high, to consider your own self somebody big, that is arrogance and consider others inferiors, that is arrogance and that is really despised and shunned by the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. كُلُّ ذَٰلِكَ كَانَ سَيِّئُهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ مَكْرُوهَا that which is evil, all of these, is detestable in the sight of your Lord. This is part of the wisdom your Lord has revealed to you. So, ulama mufassirin have written that uh, the Sahaba have said that these 15 commandments, this is the summary of the whole Torah. The whole Torah, the Old Testament that was given to her Sayyidina Musa alayhi this is the gist, the summary of all the commandments that were given in that book. <coughs> and then again وَلَا تَجْعَلْ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخر. Again at the, end, at the end of all of these commands Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing again the core of all of these which is وَلَا تَجْعَلْ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخر. Do not take any other lords anyone other to be worshipped apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَتُلْقَى فِي جَهَنَّمَ مَلُومًا مَدْحُورًا If you do that lest you don't do that lest you should be thrown into jahannam reproached and rejected may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that state amin ya rabbal alamin rabbana taqabbal minna innaka antas samiul alim wa tub alayna innaka antat tawwabur rahim wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqihi sayyidina wa ala muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amin bihamdika ar-rahman ar-rahim